Hello everyone and welcome back. And this is the same recording and the same day and the same time as the last part was recorded. So I'm just going to continue on right where we left uh, by creating the script idle. And the script idle is going to be a pretty simple script. It's pretty much just going to be an idle script as it says. So uh, what it's going to do is first of all, it's going to test if sprite index is not equal to sprite character idle then it will set the sprite index equals to spr underscore character idle and the image index to zero this is just important if you have been running the run animation and then you change to the idle animation it has to set the sprite image index to zero so that the idle animation begins from the start. This isn't really important in my case, but if you have a more, what should I call it, advanced idle animation, it will be uh, pretty good to do this. And then, um, yeah, what we're also going to do is, we're going to test if um, uh, left, I guess, yeah, because I, think it, it, I call the variable left, I'm pretty sure. Uh, if that's the case, if uh, you press the left button, it's going to run the script, start. Uh, oh, wait a second, I'm sorry, I just forgot. You're going to set the state to uh, start run. I'm a bit confused currently. That's because I've been recording for a long, long time right now, but I hope you'll still be able to understand what I'm saying. I should probably have like taken a break, but now it's too late, I'm just going to continue on. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is going to set the state to start run. And if you press right, it's going to do the same thing. And uh, I think that this is it for now because later on we will obviously also make the jumping script in here and the uh, docking scripts in here and a lot of other stuff. But currently this is it. So uh, yeah. This should be fine. Oh, and now we also need to make the script start run. So let's say create script. Script start run and uh, this one is pretty much going to just like the idle script we're going to copy and paste this pretty much because now it's going to say if the sprite index is not equals to sprite uh, character start run then it's going to set the sprite limits to uh, uh, sprite underscore character start run or run start in this case because that's what I call the sprite for some reason even though every single is start run Whatever. <laughs> and it's also going to set the image index to zero, and this is very important in this case because, well, if the image index is not equal to zero, this won't work. And uh, this is pretty much now just going to say if left, um, also wait a second, I'm just quickly going to set a variable up here called bar moving. And uh, this is going to be a temporary variable, as you can see because um, I've written bar in front of it. This makes it temporary and makes it so it gets deleted after this script is done. So uh, when this script is done, this variable is going to be deleted. And that's, it's, that's pretty good because then it won't well, use memory because we don't need it anywhere else. We just need it in the script. So uh, if you press the left key, if left we can just use because we set the left variable in the get input of course. So if left, then we are going to set uh, moving to true and we are going to set uh, if image x scale is equals to um, let's say yeah if equals to one oh wait a second um if it's okay to the left that must be yeah that is correct uh, yeah I was just I was just very that I would miss off <laughs> so image x scale to minus one and uh, in another tutorial, I will make it that when you turn, it's going to play an animation. But for now, we're just going to simply flip the image. So, yeah. This is just going to be it for now. And uh, then also, it's going to test if condition line uh, x, comma y, comma, uh, let's say x, comma y. And then we just have to, let's just, okay, I think, how big was it, okay, it was, uh, okay, 25, so 25 just nothing, so we're going to say plus 25, then we get to the edge of the collision box, and then we're also going to say plus 
how much we want it to uh, well, be able to move. So uh, let's just say that when he's starting to move, he's just going to move two pixels at a time. And this is going to be very little, so we're going to play, press a uh, plus 22 because the collision box uh, middle is uh, 25 in, so we plus 25, and then plus 2. Yeah, I'm sorry if I'm yes, not explaining this very well right now, I'm just, as I said before, kind of tired because I've been recording for a long time. But uh, if it, you do this, if you say plus 25, plus 2, it's simply going to test if there is uh, anything in front of it. Of course, we also have to make the object. I'm just going to call it object solid. And this is a parent object we're going to create right in a moment. It doesn't create it yet, but uh, I will create it soon. So, uh, yeah, just to show you how we create the object like that. So, um, and we're going to set it to, uh, let's just say, yeah, precise, that's fine, doesn't really matter. And not me, that doesn't matter either because, well, it isn't an object of the same kind. And then under the collision line here, it's just simply going to say, um, if this is the case, or I mean, if this is not the case, then it's going to set um, x plus equals 2. So uh, this pretty much means that now he's going to, yeah, 2, not y. So now it's going to move 2 that way. Um, yeah, 2 to the left. Oh, is this in the right one? No, it's not. You know what, guys? I've messed up completely. It's, of course, minus when it's to the left. I'm sorry. This is with the right code. You have to use the left code. And, yeah, like this. So, uh, when you're placing the left key, it's going to set moving to true. Image x scale to minus 1. And test if you can move uh, to the left. And if you can, it's going to move to the left. And, um, if you can't, it's going to set state to idle obviously because well you can't move you have to go into idle mode that's really the only thing you can do and it's also going to exit because yeah it shouldn't execute any more of this code when it's in idle mode so it's going to exit and set the state to idle uh, yeah and uh, if you're pressing the right key or we are just quickly going to write else right here because then you can't press both keys at once so else if you're pressing the right key, it's once again it's going to say it's moving to true. And, uh, this time it's going to check if image x is equal to minus 1. And if it is, it's going to say it's 1. And uh, it's going to test the same thing, but just with plus instead of minus. And plus equals 2. And else it's going to do the same thing as before. So yeah, this seems pretty good now. But uh, we're also going to make it so that when you, if you release the key, Meaning you aren't moving anymore. So uh, if moving, moving is false, then it will set the state to idle and exit. And uh, yeah, now we also have to make it so that it can transfer to the run script. So let's say instead if moving is equal to true. And I'll just take a look how many frames there is in there. Okay, there are five uh, frames. Okay, this is the run script. I looked in the wrong one. I mean, the run starts right. And there are also five. So, um, yeah, if it's equals to five and image index is equal to five, this means it is at the fifth uh, image pretty much because there are five images. So, when it's right here, it should change into the running animation. So, um, if image index is equal to 5 and run is equal to true, then it's going to state equals running and exit. We do not have to put the exit here, it's just because, well, it makes the code look better, I think, because then it looks the same everywhere. And we do not need this either, that was just because I've been used to coding in C++ a bit, so I just put the semicolons after the line sometimes. But you don't have to put the semicolons only when you're using the switch statement. Okay, so now we have to add make it or make the run script. And uh, in some ways, the run script is very similar to the start run script. So you can just copy the start run script and name it to a script running. And uh, once again, we're going to set a variable called moving equals to false. And if the sprite index is not equal to char run, then it's going to set it to char run and set the image index to zero. 
And once again, you're going to say it, if left um, moving equal to true, pretty much it's going to be exactly the same thing. But this time, we're just going to change the speed because well, you have to move fast now when you're actually running from two to let's say five. So now you're going to be running with five in speed instead. And I think this is still pretty slow, but uh, yeah. And uh, now instead of setting the state to idle, it's going to set it to start run. So pretty much, uh, if you would not press anything, it's going to go back to start run. And uh, yeah, if you don't press anything and start run either, it's just going to go back to idle. Uh, this simply just makes it so that uh, the first index in this sprite run will be drawn a little bit, just so it looks a bit better. So we're going to set the state to start run in the else. And otherwise, that's pretty much just it. So uh, 5 here, 5 here, and then set it to start run. And uh, under the moving, if moving is equal to false, then it's also going to say to start run. And um, if moving equals to true, then uh, it shouldn't do anything. It should just continue on running forever. So uh, this is pretty much it. This is the run script. And I'm pretty sure this is going to be extremely glitchy and not work. So uh, yeah, we can try it out right in a moment. But uh, first we have to remember to create the OBJ underscore solid. And OBJ solid isn't going to have anything in it. It's just going to be a parent object. And parent objects are pretty much objects you can use to sort other objects into types. And uh, well, first of all, we have to put the wall to be a solid object because well, the wall is solid. So we have to set the parent of the wall to OBJ solid. And we are going to do the same thing with the wall piece and with the wall top right. So all of these guys, they are solid. Now we can see in here all its children, then these ones. And uh, we can also put the floor, but I don't think that's necessary. I'll just do it just because, why not? And uh, yeah, now I think that this might work, but I'm not sure if it doesn't work, I'll help you uh, debug it pretty much. So um, yeah, I'm going to put the player right here into the room and hit the play button. And now we just have to hope for the best, I guess. And see how many er arrows power up and none. Okay, yeah, we have one arrow already right here. Obviously, the idle animation seems to work right. I'm not sure. It doesn't actually seem like the idle animation works. And obviously, the running animation does not work. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to go under and under the game and take a look at what could be wrong. Uh, the best place to start looking is probably under the step event, and it seems like everything is fine in here. So we're going to look under the idle event because obviously something must be wrong. Hmm. And honestly, I can't see what's wrong currently. Okay, I'm just going to look under here. Okay, it should be moving. I'm not sure why this is the case. I'm just going to try removing this image index to zero. I don't know why, why that should make it bug out, but I'll just take a look at it if it works without it. Doesn't seem to be the case. So I can put that one back to zero. And now we can just try commenting out the rest of the code, and that way you'll we'll, we'll just have the most basic code left. So then we can see if it has anything to do with that code. And now, for some reason, he can still move. I'm kind of confused now. Because obviously he shouldn't be able to move now. Because, well, it must something must be wrong right now in this code. So what I'm really going to do is... Yeah, I'll be right back, maybe. I'll just take a look at how long it takes to find this out. So I'm going to go under the debug uh, object right here. And then I'm going to say plus, and then uh, player state, because then we can see the player state while being in the block mode. And the uh, colon plus ob uh, string obj player dot state. And I'm probably just doing something very stupid right now because I'm kind of tired. I'm assuming that's the case. So, yeah, okay, and I ran it without debug mode. I'll just run it in debug mode once again. And as you can see, now I can see the player state. So the states work. 
so nothing is wrong there. Mm, now we will go under here, and maybe we have to add the brick. I think. I think that might be the thing that's wrong because you have to use brick in switch statements just to be sure. That's what people always say. I'm not sure why you have to use the brick statements, but maybe it's just because otherwise you keep this up. Yeah, take a look at this. Now it works. Okay, so it's just me who misunderstood the. I just misunderstood the what it, what do they call the switch statements. You do not have to use a semicolon, I don't think. Instead, you have to use a break uh, function because I thought you had to use semicolons, but that's apparently not the case in Game Maker. In Game Maker, you have to write break. So uh, what you simply do is just replace all the semicolons with break. So uh, now it should work. And I don't know if I cut all my debugging out. I shouldn't do that because, well, it's good for you to say how see how you debug a game. But now, take a look at this. Uh, yeah, that doesn't look too good, but I mean, uh, yeah. So actually, we're just going to do on something under the idle object. If left, and under the right here, we're also going to test if you can even move to the left or right, just because then it won't actually go into the script before figuring out whether it's able to do it or not. So we're just going to go under the start run script and copy this collision line right here. And then we're going to write and you know there isn't anything right there so um, this pretty much just tests if it presses left there shouldn't be anything right there and if it presses right there shouldn't be anything right there so yeah and I forgot to write end of course so now it shouldn't look as glitchy I hope not uh, take a look at this okay and it still looks glitchy for some reason I don't know why really I'll just try adding a bit to this, like plus 10, minus 10. I'm pretty sure that's the case because uh, the thing is that it uh, changes and then it just jumps back a bit because, well, no, this isn't the problem. I have no clue what the problem is then if it's just game maker glitching out a bit. Um, I'll just take a look at this guy's mask. Hmm. Also, you know what, guys? I think we, this 25 is way too much. So instead, we're just going to add, change this like 15 and do this in all of the scripts just because. Oh, and wait a second. Uh, this is plus 1 instead of plus 10. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. It probably does not. But it could be because that was the side where it didn't work. So uh, yeah, I think it should work now. I'm just going to quickly change this in here to 15 too just because. I think he stops way too far away from the object. He should be able to walk all the way into the object. I mean, it doesn't make a lot of sense that you would make that you would, you would walk into an object, but I mean, you should be able to do it. <laughs> and let's try it out again. I mean, now it looks realistic with the walking distance to the object, but we still have this weird glitch. And it works into the other side for some reason. So I, I honestly don't know really what's the case over here. I'll just take a look at the code because it must be this. Oh, I know what's wrong. It's because I've written minus here, of course. We have to write plus here because this is to the right. That's pretty obvious. I'm sorry about that. As I have said many, many times in this video, I'm getting pretty tired. And that's why, yeah, now it works perfectly, as you can see. He doesn't want to walk into the things, so he stops right in front of them and just goes into idle mode. And if you just walk like this, he's just going to walk slowly but if you walk he's going to start walking faster and I think this looks pretty nice I mean it isn't too difficult to make until now but uh, I think it's looking fine so uh, yeah thanks a lot for watching guys uh, that was part two I think of this tutorial series so um, yeah hope you enjoyed and see you in the next part bye guys